All right, well, thanks for joining us, Paul. We really appreciate you taking time out of your, your schedule today. Um, for everybody out there, this is actually the second time we're doing this with Paul because <laughs> Matt forgot to record it the first time. <laughs> I'll just own that. So um, first of all, Paul, will you tell us who you are, where we're talking to you from, and a little bit about your business before we get into our discussion today? Yeah, sure. So I'm Paul Reuter, and I have a studio in Billings, Montana. Um, it's a you know small studio downtown. It's the only location I've ever been in. Um, I've been here about eight years. Okay. And um, you know, I think that my you know my business is probably I think I like I said last time forty five percent seniors, forty five percent sports, and then everything else is probably you know headshots in my studio, and that's okay. that pretty much wraps up everything that I do. So one question I completely forgot to ask you last time, and it's really relevant because the newest ep season of Yellowstone is coming out on Sunday. Have you ever seen them filming in Billings? Um, no. In fact, there has been, because I've watched it, obviously, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm excited for it to come out again. Um, you know, it takes place, and they call it the Paradise Valley. It's only an yeah. hour and a half here, so it's really close. There's okay. been a couple of scenes you know, maybe early on in the show where they said they were in Billings and they weren't. Oh, so, they weren't. Oh, no. okay. fact, um, There was a rodeo. Yeah, there was a big rodeo and it said Billings Rodeo or something on there. And I can tell, you know, I've lived here long enough that the, those rodeo stands aren't here. So, yeah. but even, even um, the ranch they film at isn't mm -hmm. in Paradise Valley. It's actually in Western Montana uh, okay. on the Bitterroot River or something. It's not even the Yellowstone River. So, hmm. Um, in fact, I believe the first year or two was filmed in Utah. And then really? Montana changed some filming laws and they were able to film the last few years. But it's it's over by Missoula, which okay. is five hours from here. So okay. yeah, they call it the Paradise Valley. And maybe they go there and shoot some scenes to so you know, so it looks like Paradise Valley, but it's not. Got it. Well, dang it. <laughs> I mean, obviously they go to Bozeman quite a bit. You can see downtown Bozeman and a lot of shots. So they do go there and film some stuff, but the cat the you know that ranch and everything isn't isn't in the paradise valley i was hoping you were going to tell me that you had a beer with rip or something right 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 yeah that would be awesome. <laughs> wouldn't that be awesome so in your in your history and business um what has been one of your most successful ideas that you put into practice that you could share with everybody that's listening along today paul oh wow well i think I mean, I'm just going to dive right into my my split seasons yeah. because Do I it. think I think that's has helped me be successful because, um, you know, I am alone. I I don't have any employees. I don't have anybody to edit for me, schedule for me, sell for me. It's all it's all me. So mm -hmm. you know, when I first started, I immediately started this shooting season for seniors and then a selling season, and I think it has just blossomed over the years because I learned that because I'm by myself, I didn't have time to shoot, edit, have viewings and sell all at the same time. I couldn't do it because yeah. I'm out shooting every day. So I started this, this shooting season, which I basically go from July through October here. And then after the holidays are over, I, I start selling. So um, January through May is when I, I sell all my seniors, you know, all their products and, um, you know, it works for me because it's too cold here in the winter time to be shooting in the winter. So yeah. my my income in the spring is is all of my all of my ordering, and you know it's it's a little different. Um, but you know it works for me, and yeah, it's totally. worked the year. So it's actually, I mean, it's unfortunate that we had to, to to redo this, but I think that some of the things that I've been processing in my mind since our original discussion is. You know, really, when you start to think about it, you know, you're able to do this without a staff. So you're saving, you know, a full time income year round, which can be difficult, especially if you're doing, you know, you've got a, a money season, you've got a, a not a money season, you know, kind of thing going on. You get time off for the holidays, which is awesome. And you're not having to jump from photographer Paul to sales Paul to order Paul to delivery, like you're able to keep your mind in one lane and then kind of like turn that off and then switch over here. But I do have a question for you in regards to that. So 
I know the answer to this, but nobody else does. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask it from the perspective of not knowing. So when you photograph these kids, or these seniors, do they not see any images until after the first of the year? Because I would think that they would be like, oh my gosh, I just want to see my pictures. How do you handle that? Yeah, of course. So um, so I make, I make everyone a, a small proof book with um, files or, you know, with photos that are edited. Mm-hmm. And they will come in, you know, maybe that's about three, four weeks after their photo shoot. Okay. And it's a, you know, we look at a video on the TV and they pick up their proof book and I give them a, a product booklet and I briefly show them some things that are in that booklet and show them some examples with their photos and some collages and then they're on their way. And okay. um, so they do see them. They do get them. So, um, you know, when they come back in after the first of the year to place orders, they bring those proof books with them and, you know, they're sticky notes all over those proof books. So, you know, grandma's favorites, this side of the family's favorites, my favorites, and they're all, you know, I've seen it all over the years, but they, they come in knowing exactly what they want. Okay. And so the proof books work, but, but, but yeah, but they do, they do get to see those photos pretty quick. So then are you outsourcing your, like the editing of all those files or are you doing all that yourself? I do it all myself and I, I get pretty, pretty, pretty quick at it over the years, okay. you know? <laughs> so, um, I stay up, I stay up on it. You know, I understand that I have to edit quickly because every day I'm shooting a new senior. So if you don't edit a senior within a day or two and get that process going, then you just fall behind further and right. further behind and yeah, it would be nice. I've, I mean, I've looked into outsourcing editing and at the end of the day, you know, I just can't do it yeah. <laughs> for, for a lot of reasons. Part of it's because I'm a little controlling and I like to do things my way. Mm-hmm. Um, and then some of it is too that, um, you know, that that I, I don't make a lot of changes unless I think I have to. And right. if something's working, I keep doing it right. until I say yeah. something's not working. So yeah. I, I just keep doing it and it's busy and it stresses me out, you know, July, August, September, October, but I don't know. I make it through my my year every year. Yeah. So then with your with your sports and events, like how does that all filter in then during that split season? Yeah, it's <laughs> tough. Um, so when fall sports start in the middle of August, I pretty much take out a four week period, uh, mid August through mid September. And I don't schedule any seniors during that time. It's all it's all sports teams. Okay. So um those four weeks are packed full of sports teams and I do it's not just you know all the orders for the parents you know the memory mates and stuff like that it's it's a lot of uh team posters big posters that I design um I also do a lot of player banners you know with an individual photo on it and I'll design individual player banners and um it's become a pretty popular thing around here and so you know you go into gyms or football stadiums their banners hanging up in the stadiums and uh that's cool it's become very profitable if I can do a poster, player banners, and parent orders all in one photo shoot. You know, I've kind of, I've gotten really, I think I've perfected how to make as much money as I possibly can out of one photo shoot with, yeah. with sports teams. So that's awesome. It adds to the editing because those posters are very time consuming. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've seen some of them and they're like, yeah, I can't imagine the time that goes into those. I, I can I can whip those things out a lot quicker than I, I did six, seven years ago. You know, it used to take me a really long time. But now I just I've done so many of them that that I can I can get through them pretty quick and move along to the next one. But but yeah, there's that that month where it's just nothing but sports. So it does kind of break up my senior season a little bit. Mm-hmm. And that's OK, you know, to uh, to come back and be excited about it again and have a little break, you know, from that. So a question that I've been thinking about. So you're that the split season, and I know we're talking a lot about this, but I think it's really relevant to a lot of people who are going to be listening along because honestly, your weather is our weather is, you know, chop the country in half. It's half the country's weather, you know, and it makes a lot of sense in a lot of, a lot of ways. Um, How did you train your clients like we we hear that from the platform a lot you know you have to educate your clients you have to train your clients you know all the things but you have created a system that really works for you and your clients have been like yeah okay yep this is fine 
And normally when you're trying to, you know, train or to educate, it's because you're trying to push something that potentially you're going to get some pushback from on the client. Like, what has been your experience? Has it been easy? Has it been hard? Like, what what was the initial reaction from people? Or was it you just saying, this is how we do it? And they're like, oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, pretty much when they come and meet with me in the spring and I, I go over the details of the summer <clears> and, my <throat> and everything, it is kind of a, hey, I'm going to do your photo shoot. You're going to come in and pick up your book. And then I'm not going to hear from you until January. I mean, that's... Don't talk to me for a few right, months, kid. Right. <laughs> and I just got to get through my season, right? And And everyone's pretty good about it. I get a lot of people that maybe forget that. And so they'll text me before they come in to view their photos and they'll say, well, I don't have to pick them out today, do I? And I'm like, no, 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 you don't have to do that. So some people don't want to have to do that. Some people don't want to be pressured. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, I think a lot of people appreciate that because mm -hmm. I, you know, people want to be able to go home, look at their proof book, take their time. And, you know, there may be some downsides for me, you know, yeah. maybe I lose some money doing it that way, but like I said, I don't, I don't have time to do orders until right. that time. But, um, so I, so I guarantee you, I, I would, I would bet you a, a crispy $20 bill that in the YouTube comments and questions, we're going to have somebody that says, aren't you concerned about somebody copying your work with the proofs going out? So how do you handle that? Well, in the proof book, not that this makes any difference, but one of the first images on there is a copyright note. Um, and then, you know, each each image in the proof book has a big old watermark across the whole thing of okay. it. So there Got is it. that. Um, so, I, yeah, I don't think it's really possible. And, um, you know, no one's ever not come into order. Okay. And then, well, you know, the first, for the first few years <laughs> I did those proof books, I would ask people, hey, do you like these proof books? Like you know, what would you think if I didn't do proof books in the future? And all the parents are like, no, we loved having it. We loved showing it off to family during the holidays. I get parents that say, well, I took it to my kid's football game and mm -hmm. it got passed around all yeah. the parents, you know, and, and that's just good for me. My name's on right. it. Yeah. So um, I know that parents that get those books when they leave here, it's getting passed around at work. Some yeah. you know, girls will walk out of here with it in their hand and the mom doesn't see it for weeks because they take it to school. <laughs> yeah. Other other people are like, well, I didn't get one of these or whatever, but I think it I think it's been a good thing. Mm -hmm. You know, when you think about, <clears throat> you know, you brought it up, you're like, well, maybe I'm, you know, missing out on money or or whatever like that. But you know, you take the big bowl and you start throwing, okay, I could be giving up a little bit of money in sales, but I'm saving a staff person. I'm taking some time off before the holidays. I'm getting marketing out of this, you know, and you start to stir in all these things. And at the end of the day, obviously we don't know for sure, but it probably is a wash. And it might even end up being more to your benefit because of the not, you don't have to uh, have a salary and you don't have to train somebody. And you're, you're getting that, um, <clears throat> you're doing your business different than a lot of people are doing now. And in this day and age, you know, the experience is such a big part of it. And for, it sounds like what you're doing is you're creating an experience for these kids and the parents by letting them do this. So, yeah. And like, and like you said, I think you take all these things that I do that are different than a lot of people and you stir them all together and mm -hmm. it, it comes out and it works for me. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And I like how you, you said that basically, you know, if it's not broke, we're not going to fix it, you know? And I talk with a lot of people that I think, um, I need to stop saying, I think that I know just constantly want to fix what's not broken and they want to change things. And they heard this person say this, and now we want to do it. That's a dangerous game to play. Right. And I had you know? a mentor of mine years ago, tell me, don't ever change something you do because of one person. And I've oh, always remembered yeah. that, um, you know, if one person complains that I don't sell digital images, if it's just one a year, then I'm not going to change what I do and start doing that because I had one client complain. Right. I've always, I've always kept that close. Yeah. One of the things that I recommend when people are going through 
challenges and they, and they want to talk about like what we're seeing is don't let emotion take over. You know, take a piece of paper and keep it next to your your computer, you know, in your sales presentation. And every time you have somebody that brings up, some, uh, you know, a legitimate question or a complaint or concern or something that's really going good, make a note of that. And then put a hash mark after each person that does. And you'd be surprised how few people there are that actually do that. But when we hear it one time, we're like, oh, man, I have to change this because now everybody's going to want to. OK, well, that's not true, you know. Yeah, and you're, you're afraid of upsetting more than one person, and you don't want right. to look at your clients. And yeah, yeah. So, if you were going to shake everything down, you know, through a funnel, Paul, and settle at your why for why you do what you do, and being a, a, a compassionate people person oriented photographer, what is your why? What did I answer last time? Because I can't remember. I don't remember. <laughs> I'd have to listen to the audio. I mean, I mean I, it yeah, be, we should be something yeah. new. <laughs> yeah, you should have sent it to me. Um, I mean, I think we talked about my history, right? And probably how I got into it was mm -hmm. from my journalism background. Yep. Because uh, that's what I did for a good 12 years. Yep. And um, I do remember telling you that I when I was in journalism working for newspapers that I absolutely hated portrait mm -hmm. photography, right? You did, yep. I didn't think it was an ethical way to tell a story and I hated shooting portraits. I complained about it all the time. And then, you know, when I got burned out and left journalism, <laughs> wouldn't you know it, this is what I'm doing. So yeah. um, honestly though, when I, when I left journalism, I, I realized that in order for me to make money, I had to do portraits. That's, that's mm -hmm. how you make money and yeah. That's that's the why, um, and I I learned how to do it, and it turned into something that I enjoy, obviously. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and Ranger needs to be fed. Yeah, right. I gotta I gotta do that. <laughs> I have a lot of things to pay for, you yeah. know. Because there's boat gas and yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. And and big news from Pennsylvania since we talked last too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> for everybody who is watching. What would be one piece of advice that you would give out to, you know, somebody who is beginning, somebody who is listening to how you're doing business differently than maybe what they're being taught right now from a lot of different factors? Somebody who's been in business for a long time, like, what is the thing that maybe like looking back eight years or 10 years, if somebody had been like, Paul, this is one thing that I'm going to recommend that you do and you do it every day or you do it every year, like, what would that thing be that you could pass along? <laughs> well, I, I think it's important to make small changes and make them slow. Um, I think it takes probably a few years to get into a, a rhythm as to what you're good at, what you're not good at, you know, how to make your business flow and to not make sudden changes. You know, like we said, if mm -hmm. one client doesn't like a certain thing that you do, it doesn't mean you have to change for everyone. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I do things a little bit different than a lot of people, but it's it's because that's that's how my business has evolved. And yeah. And that's you know, your brand. Yeah, it has become that, I suppose. <clears throat> so, you know, for the last few years when I watched the Hive videos, um, I just, I might, you, sh you know, my jaw is usually open watching how people run their businesses. And I think, wow, well, maybe I should do that. Maybe I should do that that way. And then I realize that's not me. Mm -hmm. you know, I, don't, I don't think that I could do that. And so then it, I think in the last couple of years, it's just really made me think that you know, what I do, it works and it's okay. I don't have to compare myself to somebody else. Right. I mean, there's a lot of wisdom in that. You know, you're you're not going through the comparison of, well, this person's doing it this way. I better do it that way or I'm not going to be successful. That's That couldn't be further from the truth. You know, there's, there's as many ways of being successful as there are ways to do business out there. Right. And I love hearing how other people do things. It's fascinating mm -hmm. to me. And I loved those videos of, not only seeing people's studios, but learning their process, especially with seniors and, mm -hmm. you know, the entire process with them. I, I love seeing that kind of stuff, but you don't have to watch those videos and try to be like somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. For yeah. Sure. Everyone, for sure. everyone can do it their own way and it can still work. Yeah. It can be very successful. Yeah, totally. Well, I really appreciate you doing this with us again. 
Uh, I, I do have it recorded this time. I'm going to double check if you fully <laughs> yeah. started. I think you had to accept uh, to be recorded this yes, time. So you're that, right. That's, that's, that's a good that's thing. A good sign. So, cool. Awesome. Okay. All awesome. Right. Thank you, my friend. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Thanks a bunch. All right. Thanks. All right. Bye. Bye.